your home for Ducks basketball. I think we have talent. We have some good experience. Duarte to the basket, the slam. Nomarui, 4-3, yeah! I think we have enough talent to have a very competitive team. Oh, and a steal and slam for Williams. I think we've got as much talent, if not more, than we've ever had in our game. Mike Till fires, hits! Only right corner three, another Bowie ball! The Ducks have done the double championship for the second time in three years. The Ducks are Pac-12 champions! It's time for Tip-Off Tuesday, presented by Carl's Jr. on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Visit your locally family-owned and operated Carl's Jr. today. Carl's Jr., feed your happy. From the Country Financial Studio, alongside Terry Johns, here's Joey Mack. Thank you, and it's good to be back with you as we can tell you that men's basketball has resumed team activities. Back on the practice floor yesterday, Ducks uh, were obviously excited, a lot of energy, and then, man, that feels good. Now, we, we thought there was going to be a men's basketball game today. That has been rescheduled to February 1st. The Ducks, unfortunately, have to play two games in L.A., but at this point, if you can get the game in, get the game in. So this weekend... We didn't have a lot of basketball to talk about uh, because also women's basketball with Arizona State on a COVID pause. Uh, no games this weekend, and it felt a little bit odd, didn't it, it Terry Jones? It did. It feels like I've been off for uh, like a month. I yeah. Didn't, you know, hey, and uh, getting back to uh, Matthew Knight Arena, I haven't been there since the UCLA loss. Uh, so, you know, and then we got to talk about Arizona. Let's. Let's move along. Move along. Yeah. Uh, the Ducks uh, for women's basketball will face the Washington schools this weekend. And for men's basketball, Oregon against Oregon State at 730. All those games on Pac-12 Network as well. 5 o'clock for the women on Friday and 2 o'clock on Sunday. And then the men will play at 730 against Oregon State at Matthew Knight Arena. Three home games uh, for the Ducks this weekend. Looking forward to it. All right, today we've got assistant coach Mike Menega for Oregon men's basketball. We discussed a lot of topics. Mike and I did this morning, actually, as the Ducks, if you're live, with us in the 2.30 to 3.30 hour. Oregon men's basketball actually on the practice floor right now. Talked to Mike Menega about a number of things, with yesterday being Martin Luther King Day and the Ducks were on a pause and just the mental toll on that. It was a fascinating conversation. We also talked about basketball as well. And, uh, well, for the women, a chance for a bounce back at home. Yeah, Coach, uh, looking for a bounce back, but it's a very good uh, Washington State team on Thursday, 5 o'clock tip, and then uh, Sunday the Huskies in town. It's always when the Huskies are in town, uh, 2 o'clock uh, tip off there. But a uh, tough team out there, Washington State especially. As everybody's found out, Coach said when the Ducks won close in Pullman that this is a good team, and uh, they are. The Ledger Walker sisters from New Zealand are Really, really good players. So Kelly Graves coming up, and also Taylor Chavez, our player spotlight. Absolutely. And Taylor, uh, the, the, the captain. I don't know. She's kind of the captain, I think, now. I don't know if she is. I'm saying she's the captain. But uh, had a great chat with her yesterday, and I think you're going to enjoy it. It's Tip-Off Tuesday presented by Carl's Jr. A lot more to come. A quick time out because we have tons of interviews for you. So stick with us. We're back to the Country Financial Studio talking with Mike Menega, Oregon men's basketball assistant, right after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. What's it like to grow with the O? At OCCU, we support duck fans each step of the way by educating our youth with lucky duck savings, celebrating independence with duck debit checking, and rewarding members with a duck credit card. That's how duck fans grow with OCCU. Learn how you can too at myoccu.org slash ducks. Ninkasi Brewing is proud to be an official partner of the Oregon Radio Network. Are you kidding me? Touchdown, Oregon! Independently owned and brewed in Eugene since 2006, Ninkasi invites you to slay the season with Slayer Winter Ale on shelves now. Slayer is available in a six-pack of bottles and in a 12-pack of cans for the very first time. More information at NinkasiBrewing.com. That's NinkasiBrewing.com. Your home for Ducks basketball, the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Listen and imagine. It takes five seconds to send a text, and for those five seconds, you're driving blind. Life is worth more than a text. Stay alive. Don't text and drive. 
Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. Everybody buckle up. Bum, 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 bum. Buckle up. Let's go. Buckle up. Can we go to the store? Come on, buckle can we get up. Some ice cream? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Everybody. Everybody, buckle up. A light goes on in the car, but you're in control. So only move when you hear the click that says they're buckled in. Never give up until they buckle up. Learn more at safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. We're back on Tip Off Tuesday, presented by Carl's Jr. Joey Mack with you inside the Country Financial Studio. Kind enough to take some time and join us from, I guess I'll call it the home office, for one, Mike Managa, Oregon men's basketball assistant coach, is our guest. Coach, thanks for being here. Uh, let's start with the most important thing from the weekend, which is you guys are back practicing. Uh, that's got to be good news, and I know a welcome, welcome thing for you and the entire staff and the team, right? 100%. I mean, like I said, Joy, again, thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure. And, uh, you know, it's a blessing to have played games and even more of a blessing to have games to look forward to. So it's great to be back in the gym um, after coming off a brief pause. And, uh, you know, up next with Oregon State up next, it's, it's a game that, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. It's a battle that we got to you know, take on every year. And, uh, Obviously, you know, we'll be ready for it. And uh, needless to say, it was a lot of energy uh, in practice yesterday and uh, looking forward to getting back to it today. Yeah, the Ducks got back practicing uh, yesterday. Team activities have resumed after that pause, and we're all glad for that. The second most important thing from the weekend, though, Coach, could you put your mask up for everybody? <laughs> we got a little, you know, Coach Menick is an uh, honorary member of the Bills Mafia, so I'll rock the Bills. I'll rock the O. Uh, all about winning, all about winning, all about winning. It's a beautiful thing, Joey. You know, it's, uh, uh, you know, you know, me and my, you know, part of the, the Canadian connection had to be, was connect, was connected to me and my wife actually living in the city of Buffalo for roughly 13 years of our adult life. And, uh, we still have many, many friends back there. And, uh, that is one city. Uh, where the mood shifts to how the Bills and the Sabres and how they do. So needless to say, it's been a lot of gray, gloomy Monday, Tuesdays <laughs> in the city of Buffalo. But uh, that was not the case for these last mm -hmm. couple of weeks. So uh, uh, me and the wife, man, we had to, we made we made two things required for the weekend for the family. Number one, we made the, our daughters watch the Four Falls of Buffalo on 30 for 30. If you haven't seen it, <laughs> yes. it's yes. a must. It's a must. <laughs> it's a must. If you don't get it, but, but being a Buffalonian and all that's about, that's what it, it's about. You I, know? Love, I love and... Buffalonian. Wait, first of all, <laughs> Buffalonian, that's great. <laughs> yep, so 30 for 30, Four Falls of Buffalo, then obviously the game. Uh, we flew in some some wings from our favorite wing spot, Lenovo. Wow. Amazing. You know, amazing. I don't know my daughter's cell phone numbers, but I know their cell phone, their number. Is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Well, that's so cool. Uh, you know, there's a few Bills fans around the Oregon <laughs> Athletic Department. One of them is Coach Menega. Um, so, so they've got to be your Super Bowl pick, right? Oh, 100%. They're my Super Bowl pick every year, Joey. Oh, yeah, every right, year. Right, right. It doesn't matter. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> That's right. That's right. My bad. I should have I should have known better, coach. Uh, Mike Medega joining us. All right. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your squad, coach. I mean, just you're going through so much this year. And, and and you and I have talked about this a little bit before, both on and off the air, that this is such an odd year trying to to just make sure everything is going well not just physically with a virus and, and a pandemic, but mentally too, coach. I mean, what, what's the mental toll on, on your squad, not just maybe with, with the virus, but also everything going on in the world. I mean, there, there's kind of a lot to unpack there, isn't it? And you're, you guys are leading young men and having some, some large conversations with them. Uh, 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 it has been, and obviously coming off yesterday uh, with Martin Luther King day uh, yesterday, there was some great conversations just about who he was, what he stood for, 
And, uh, you know, obviously considering the, the times we were in coming off this summer, we've had our own independent conversations about that, Joey, and, 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 and working through this election process now, MLK Day on the eve of inauguration day on Wednesday and then culminating all this with, uh, uh, with the season. And, uh, so, um, mental health is a big part of it, you know, Joey. And, and I think when we first started it, we didn't quite totally understand what that is. And, uh, obviously, you know, I look at, I, I come back to even my family, my daughter, you know, she's in her senior year of high school and looking back last year, when we were in Vegas during March, who would have thought, that those juniors would still be affected by this uh, almost a year later, yeah. you know? Um, so let alone the seniors that went on to college and now are affected by their freshman year, you guys even got the next crew coming in and they're affected by it. So again, a lot of factors there, you know what I mean? And, uh, and I must say this, whether it's our team, whether it's just, just generation of young person, what a resilient bunch, you know? And, uh, um, like I said before, Joey, that's why it's such a blessing just to get in the gym, you know what I mean, just to have an opportunity to play. But uh, but that being said, um, there were a lot of things going on there a lot bigger than basketball, and uh, that's kind of a, a, a term that I've coined over the last, you know, year is, uh, you know, there's more to basketball than basketball. And, uh, you know, and, and it's just a game, but within that game, um, there's so many lessons, and you, you, you get to, you know, work with people and, and you learn and deal with them and what motivates, inspires them. And obviously it's not just your team is how your team and your player it fits into the society. And we're trying to get our guys, Joey, to be honest with you and coach has been infusing this and being leaders, you know what I mean? And, and, and not only just leading with your voice, but obviously leading by your actions. So uh, one way we could give back to our community and our duck fans when we play is, you know, give our all and, 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 and fight for this. And uh, so, we're, we're, we're having many conversations on a daily basis, but a lot goes into it. And again, um, it's just a blessing to play, you know, and a blessing to come together and, and, and practice and have a game to look forward to. You know, Coach, I've always felt like sports is an escape. You know, we, we, you talk about that in my industry a lot, that, that sports is at the end of the newscast because it's the fun thing that people wait around to see during the newscast, right? But at the same time, I feel like sports is such a cool avenue because – it can show a, a lot of diversity and it can show a lot of change in, in the world. I feel like this season has got to be the ultimate example of sports is an escape, but but sports is also an avenue for, for, for good and for change. And, and, and it's maybe the most direct reflection of a society is, is what we celebrate on on the sports stage. Do you agree with that? I mean, do you kind of feel that way as a coach? hundred percent. And I mean, I, I didn't feel it when we go on the road. Like, for example, we went to our Pac-12 home opener. We were at Washington and before the game, obviously, there are arch rivals, the Huskies. But, you know, we banded with arms, got in a big circle. And, you know, it was just one of those moments where, you know, us as players on this stage, you know, what I mean, we represent something that's bigger than us. And, uh, you know, I think that's the biggest thing that any young athlete, even, even coaches have really, really saw this past year, you know what I mean? Whether it's the NBA and their actions within the bubble, you know what I mean? The NFL moving on now and just playing in the playoffs and the NBA, these are great platforms um, uh, to not only, you know, you know, you, you, to come together as a team, but to only impact what's going on in today's world, you know? So, the fact that, like I said, we celebrated Martin Luther King Day yesterday. It was just a great day to reflect and remember what he stood for and to just see what we need to continue to push on and, and, and to make progress, not only as our team was just talking together, but how can we do our part to make our community or society better? You know, so again, Joey, it's a lot going on, a lot to take in, um, but uh uh, the mental part of it has is 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 a huge part of for the the young person today. Well, and Mike Menega certainly a, a, a great example for basketball players, athletes in general. Uh, really dives into and embraces that it's bigger than basketball. I love that conversation with Mike Menega. More coming up. Also, Kelly Graves, Taylor Chavez from Women's Basketball. Stick with us. Tip off Tuesday, presented by Carl's Jr. More with Mike Menega next on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College.
Dear Wallet, you can't stop in a 2021 Toyota no matter the weather. The Camry all-wheel drive comes out to play. Snowy hills don't stand a chance against the RAV4, and everyone will be comfy in the Highlander. See you in the snow. Toyota. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. In the mood for a charbroiled double cheeseburger for just $2.99? Have a BLT, the Carl's Jr. way. Crispy bacon, fresh lettuce and tomato with cheesy charbroiled beef. Plus creamy ranch and more charbroiled beef. It's the new BLT Ranch Double Cheeseburger. That beefy enough for you? Get a taste of the new BLT Ranch Double Cheeseburger for just $2.99. Part of Charbroiled Double Deals at Carl's Jr. Double up to feed your happy. Offer valid for a limited time at participating Carl's Jr. restaurants. Price and participation may vary. Tax not included. More than ever, you're looking for the perfect getaway. With gourmet food, your favorite games, and a beautiful lodge, book the perfect getaway at Spirit Mountain Casino, the Northwest's premier entertainment destination. Go to spiritmountain.com. Ducks basketball lives here on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Okay, man, this is your time. Maybe you didn't choose this, but you're here now. You're gonna go out there and be an all-star caregiver. Cook, clean, be there emotionally and physically. You gotta dig deeper. Drive them to physical therapy, doctor's appointments, because that's what caregivers do. Don't give up. Show the world that you're tougher than tough. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Is that a faucet running? That's not a faucet. That's a river rushing through the forest. Forest rivers provide over 100 million people with clean water to drink. What? I can't hear you because of the vacuum. That's not a vacuum. That's the trees in the forest cleaning up the air we breathe. I didn't know the trees were so amazing. Yep, and the forest gives us shade, trees to climb. That's awesome. Go explore some more. Visit the forest today and enjoy all it does just for you. To learn more about the forest and find one near you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Tip Off Tuesday, presented by Carl's Jr., Happy Joey birthday, Mack, Joey. and Terry Jones. Thank you, Terry. Happy birthday, Joey. It is. I, it's I, Joey's birthday. He's 28 years old. It's a good day. Gosh. I really hope that the 28th year of existence for one Joey Mack is better than the 27th. Hey. Thanks for the basketball squishy ball Here, for I'll the present. And the day. flag for me. Thank you. Wrong sport. <laughs> Wrong sport. <laughs> yeah, I really hope that the 28th year of existence is better than the 27th. Though. Hey, congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I, I was saying to Terry earlier that uh, as I sit here and play with the basketball, I was saying to Terry <laughs> earlier that I really appreciate a, a happy birthday wish that isn't just like, oh, happy birthday, man. Like, I like the ones that are creative and funny. So to Sports Information Director Greg Walker, who just wrote Go Ducks on my Facebook timeline, I appreciate the creativity, sir. But you knew you. what it meant. I'm like, really? I, I did, but, uh, I, but I, I laughed. I thought it was funny. Okay. I thought that it was creative. Well done, Greg. Meanwhile, we continue with Mike <laughs> Menega, Oregon men's basketball <laughs> assistant coach. Ducks are back at practice uh, getting ready for Oregon State. Talked about some of the key standouts for the Ducks and, and, and frankly, how recruiting has changed for Mike Menega and the Oregon men's basketball program. What's happening on the floor, Coach? Mm. I, I I really feel like I, I got to zero in on a few guys with you, and one of them fans are very familiar with him. He's won the Pac-12 Player of the Week and Chris Duarte, but I also want to talk with you about Eugenio Marui and Eric Williams to zero in because those are two guys that were on the team last year but kind of new faces to fans. Take fans, if you could, through the process for Eugene and Eric and what they've brought to the team for you this year. Well, uh, Eugene and Eric have been tremendous additions to our program, not only in what you're seeing on their productivity game to game this year, but they've been amazing from the day when they stepped on campus because they elevated our practice play every day last year. So even though they didn't necessarily score any points, rebounds, or garner any assists in last year's championship run, but they were there. Iron sharpens iron, Joey. You know what I mean? And those guys came in and were really determined. And, uh, you know, the, they were motivated by the fact of being able to practice against Peyton every day. You know what I mean? Uh, go head to head with Shakur, you know, with Anthony, with Chris, you know what I mean? And, and, and that resonates through the team, you know what I mean? And not only just in those guys and collectively, but when we brought Dante in, you know what I mean? Our young guys, Chandler Lawson, you know what I mean? The, these guys, Will, these guys have all um, reaped rewards of each other. And Eugene and Eric were a great stimulus to all that. You know, and now 
having coming off witness that championship run this year and now being unleashed to play, even though it's been some herky jerky here, considering what's going on with, with COVID and everything like that. But that's inspired, that's inspired them even more. You know what I mean? So obviously you can see when Eric and Eugene are locked in, uh, their physical presence is, 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 is going to take one heck of a gladiator in college basketball to take them guys down when they're rolling like that, you know? And uh, yeah. um, like I said, they're getting better every day and, you know, I just can't wait to get them all back on the, on the floor together, you know? And, uh, but, uh, but Eric and Eugene have been a tremendous asset to us, you know, not only in games, but just developing in practice. Saturday, 7.30, uh, it's the Ducks and the Beavers. And Eugene, mm -hmm. uh, it'll be at Matthew Knight Arena. Looking forward to it Saturday at 7.30. I, I got to ask you a little bit about Chris Duarte, Mike. I mean, just how good has Chris been in Pac-12 games? I, I know the non-conference in the regular season started a little bit slow, at least by his standards, but has been, I think, as good as anybody in the league. I think he's a bona fide candidate for Pac-12 Player of the Year. How good has Chris been lately? 100%. I mean, Chris Duarte is an all-American all caliber player. You know what I mean? And uh, if you really look back on it, Duck fans and us coaches shouldn't be that surprised, right? You know what I mean? Considering some of the moments he had last year. And then, obviously, one thing we're learning about college basketball is that experienced teams really have an advantage. You know what I mean? I think what's going on now with Chris is just the culmination of his skill his work and now that experience, you know what I mean? And obviously him and coach Altman, I mean, he's a perfect fit for his far style of play. I um, mean, he's executing exactly what coach Altman wants from him. You know what I mean? Uh, I love the energy he's bringing on the defensive end. You know what I mean? I think Chris, we do a lot of talk around here about that pro mindset. You know what I mean? And, 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 and Chris is one of those guys where I honestly believe he's starting to morph his mentality to whatever it takes to win the game that's what I'm going to do. You know what I mean? I think any player on the come up is thinking about points and my numbers, how productive I am. But I think Chris and like guys like Eugene, they just want to win. And whatever producti production comes out at the end, as long as the Ducks win, that's what it is. And we'll build on that. You know what I mean? So um, I love how he's taken ownership, you know what I mean, of our team and, and his individual game. Well, speaking then of pro mindset, how about some of your pro ducks? Uh, Chris Boucher, talk about the Canadian connection, Mike. Uh, he's just been absolutely lighting it up. I mean, it, that's got to be cool for you guys to see so many awesome. players doing so well in the NBA. I mean, I could go down the entire list. Peyton, Dylan, Troy, uh, there's so many that come to mind now, and that, that's got to be so cool for you guys to see. We take a lot of pride in that, Joey. You know what I mean? And uh, I think the best is still yet to come. You know what I mean? I feel Chris has got a lot in the tank. I think Bull Bull, you know, recently got a couple starts. I know Denver's real excited about Bull. You know, Troy just exercised his fourth year in the NBA. You know, uh, you know, Lewis King, Kenny Wooten, these guys are getting ready to get going in the G League bubble. And got Dylan Ennis, who's going into his, you know, third year with the same team in the ACB League in Spain. You know what I mean? So, Again, Joey, super excited for them and super proud of them. You know, I, I got to ask you, too, then, uh, about recruiting and, and how it's impacted recruiting, Mike. And, and how has recruiting been different in this era? I mean, you must be a, a Zoom master at this point. Are there, <laughs> are, there any settings, are there any settings within Zoom that you don't know how to use? <laughs> I, 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 we rely on Pat Scully to keep us smart and all the technology <laughs> around here. So I can't take any credit on that. You know, I barely could turn my computer on and the unmute button. And then after <laughs> that, it's a free for all, you know, um, I, 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 it has, you know what I mean? And uh, I think this goes for anybody. I mean, take a look at our roster right now. Okay. Aaron Estrada and Frank Kepnang are two recruits that never saw our campus in person yeah. until the day they showed up. So even over this last year of COVID, it has impacted, you know, two recruiting classes, you know. So obviously Frank was a was a reclass and then, you know, Aaron was a true, you know, you know, in essence a COVID style recruit, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So um so it, it's definitely changed, Joey. You know, it's escalated. Um you know, families and players making decisions. And at the same time, it's put us at the forefront to make sure that we do all the investigative work and, 
and uh, you know, background that these are not only great players, but they're fits for our locker room and team. Sure. Shout out Patrick Scully, by the way, video coordinator. Well done. Yeah. Well done, coach. That, <laughs> uh, that's great. You got to get, yeah, I, I love the shout out. I know how much work that guy does and, 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 mm. and the, there's something that, that fans should know. It's called sport code where you, you can literally go through the film of a game. Uh, Mike and I've talked about this with synergy in the past and, and code everything that happens. Well, Patrick Scully can watch an entire game and have it done before coach Altman gets on the bus. Unbelievable. I mean, it's the, the <laughs> fingers are, I mean, it's wild. It is wild to watch that man work. Uh, finally, uh, finally, Mike, I, I just got to ask you, Keys to a, a win over the Beavers coming up on Saturday. 7.30 tip-off. Uh, what's on your guys' mind? Keys to a win. You know, I, I mean, right now, I think our keys to the win is, gonna, is something that you'll hear from Coach moving forward. We're putting a huge emphasis right now on ball movement and body movement. You know, really, really moving the ball. You know, think about the players we just talked about, you know, with, with Chris, you know, Eugene. You know what I mean? Will Richardson on the cusp. You know what I mean? We're getting Kepnang going. We got Chandler. You know, so... The better our ball movement, the better the body movement, the, the, the more effective we're going to be offensively. And then uh, obviously, you know, the emphasis on the defensive side. You know what I mean? We got to continue, continue. Our magic number is 70, Joey. You know, we're trying to get guy, teams under 70. When we can hold teams under 70, you know, the Ducks have good days. You know, so um, so those two pieces, then the final piece is just like, it, like Coach says, it's a 40-minute fight. You know what I mean? And we want to go in there and give Duck fans – and Duck Nation, all we got every time we got a game, and and that constitutes out rebounding the opponent, generally speaking. You know what I mean? So, um, so those are the big things. You know, we really want to get better at moving the ball when we got our guys back in the gym. You know what I mean? Continue to emphasize the defensive side of the ball, and you know, no matter who you are, you know, the Beavers, whoever you are, you can't out tough us. So we got to continue to win the the battle on the glass. Mike Benega, Oregon men's basketball assistant coach. Mike, thanks so much for taking the time. I can't thank you enough. And looking forward to, to hopefully shaking your hand again in person one of these days. Uh, instead of I'd doing love that. Hey, and before virtually. I let you, yeah, hey, no doubt, Joey. All good either way. It's all family. And, uh, and one more quick shout out, you know, to the hardest working man in our program and maybe on campus, Clay Jamison, our trainer. I mean, off the charts, the amount of stuff that he's been dealing with. Uh, through this uh, period that we've been with our program on pause and the protocols with the state, with the university, with the Pac-12. My man's the beat is a beast, and uh, we wouldn't be champs without him. You know what I mean? So shout out to Clay Jamison, our trainer. He's the man. I love that. Uh, Clay absolutely is the man. He's also an expert when it comes to identifying sweat spots on the court. <laughs> you will never see a man more thorough. <laughs> hey. I'll Ever. leave you with this, Joey. When you come out of our tunnel, we have a little saying that uh, Mr. Knight put in our tunnel when we lead out to the arena. It says, fear no man. I, I live by that, Matthew, but I do fear Clay Jameson. So <laughs> I'll just say that. <laughs> Clay, and the, Clay and the lead character from Breaking Bad, man. Oh. They, there's, I don't mess with Clay. That's... I don't mess with Clay. Classic. <laughs> Mike Benega, Oregon men's basketball assistant coach. Mike, thanks so much for joining us. Always appreciate it, sir. Awesome. Go Ducks. Appreciate oh, y'all. Thank you. That's great. Mike Menega joining us on the University of Oregon Alumni Association guest line. A quick timeout. Tip-off Tuesday presented by Carl Jr. We're back talking with Kelly Graves next on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Hi, welcome to the Spicy Drive-In. May I take your order? Can I get the spicy chicken sandwich, please? The spicy chicken is an excellent choice, sir. And a drink? Uh, whatever's fine. Oh, may I make a beverage pairing recommendation this evening? Sure. If we are feeling especially bold tonight, sir, I would recommend the Mountain Dew with that. It's bravely unrestrained with a very alive aroma that pairs wonderfully with your spicy chicken. It's followed by a hint of zesty citrus flavor. Uh, yeah, that sounds amazing. I'm sure you already know this, sir, but remember to appreciate the nose first by giving the Mountain Dew a little swirl to relieve really volatize it. Uh, uh, uh vola what? To change the flavor compounds and activate your taste buds to get them fully primed for that chicken sandwich. Ah, oh, it's delicious. <laughs> now you're getting the hang of it. The muscular flavor charge characteristics of Mountain Dew make for an absolutely epic mouthfeel when paired with spicy cuisine. It is quite on point, sir. Dude, it's a perfect match. Like they were made for each other. So true, so true. When you want to make good food bolder and bold food better, <laughs> do the do. This is Ducks Basketball from Learfield IMG College. Adopt U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A teenager.
Learning the lingo. Hundo P. Hundo P. Adjective. Short for being 100% sure or certain. As in, if we get a puppy, I'll hundo P always walk it. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. A ranger station. I'd like to report a bear hug. Okay. I put out my campfire and Smokey Bear hugged me. So you drowned the fire, you stirred it, drowned it again, and felt that it was cold? Uh-huh. Yeah, but he's just letting you know you did good. Bear hug from Smokey Bear. Status update. I'm gonna let you go now. There are many ways to start a fire, but one sure way to put it out. Learn how you can do your part at SmokeyBear.com. Sponsored by the U.S. Forest Service Ad Council and your state forester. Hey, welcome back to Tip Off Tuesday, everybody, here on Joey Mac's 28th birthday. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. But we're going to talk to Kelly Graves instead, instead of uh, Joey Mac. It was his birthday recently. It was. That's d right. It, it hey, wasn't yeah, a great it wasn't, birthday, a, good, it wasn't it? a good birthday. But it was Thursday down <laughs> in Tucson. But, yeah, hopefully he got some ice cream in, you know. That's what he wanted. Our chat with Kelly Graves brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. All right, Coach. Uh, unfortunately, the last game we is, was not the good one, uh, and, and we got to talk a little bit about it. But uh, you've had a few days now since last Thursday uh, the, from the, the loss at Tucson. This is a program not used to losing and certainly not used to losing the way it did. Uh, I don't know if you've gotten together, had a couple practices or whatever, but how are they reacting? We had a good practice yesterday, so that's a positive. I think we were all a little bit disappointed and, and a little bit disgusted on, on uh, you know, our performance. I mean, uh, you know, these guys have a high standard, and and um, we've held them to that. And uh, we just – it was just one of those games, you know, that I don't – I don't recall we've had anything kind of like that, you know, since we've been here in six or seven years. And um, – you know, and it's 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 disappointing. We did it on national TV as well. But, uh, you know, it's one game in the end. And uh, we lost to a pretty good team on the road. We've just got to regroup and, uh, uh, you know, play better this week. You know, it's a, it's a grind. It really is. And, um, you know, you just you, when things like that happen, you just got to kind of forget it and move on. Now, you mentioned in the post game, uh, you know, maybe it's time to tighten the rotation a little bit instead of playing so many players to uh, still feel that way. Yeah, you know, I, I do. We've played, you know, in essence, 12 players, you know, 11 when Sedona was out for, for a few games, but uh, every single game. And, uh, you know, it just it makes the continuity on the court uh You know, it doesn't seem as smooth uh, at times. But, you know, Terry, the reality is, you know, in practice every day, we've got some players that are better than others. And then the next day, you know, it's like not like there's separation, you know, in the in the past years, we've had those players that, you know, they've earned the, the, that spot and then others fill in. They kind of know where where they're at. And and that's just not been that way. We have a lot of kids that are that are pretty even. But I I think uh, you'll, you'll see a little difference, uh, you know, this this week and, and going forward. You missed uh, Arizona State down there because of COVID protocols there, and uh, some teams make up games, some don't. Uh, where where is that one? Is there a makeup? Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know how all that's going to work. I mean, there's some teams that have lost four and five and six games. I mean, so when do you make those up? Um, yeah, <laughs> you have no idea. You know, I think uh, some of them may – but, you know, I, I look at like Washington State, they, they missed uh, Stanford the first time. I think now Stanford has to go to the Washingtons next week. I think Stanford's going to play them twice. You know, they're going to go back to back. Uh, you know, maybe we can do that with Arizona State. I, I don't know. I think it's just got to be agreed upon by the coaches and then kind of um, hammered it, hammered by the uh, by the Pac-12. But, uh, you know, we'll see. We, we need one more game, though, in to, to get to the 13 minimum that the NCA requires for the NCA tournament. Well, hopefully that Thursday will be it and you'll get that taken care of. You know, That's, even with the loss, Terry, uh, you know, we're still fourth in the net. Yeah. Which, you know, it, it just goes to show how I, I think uh, how strong our conference is. 
And, um, you, you know, that to, to think that a team nine and three would still be fourth in the, you know, in the power ratings is, uh, is pretty incredible. A couple things I wanted to talk to you about here while we have a little more time rather than the pregame show is it, it's popped up the last couple of weeks is early enrollees with some teams. I mean, some of it's COVID where kids aren't being able to play their high school season. You know, they have a free year basically to come in if they've graduated from high school. But uh, uh, where is that going? Is that something that might stick around? What are your thoughts on it? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. You know, uh, we're, we're the only country that has scholastic athletics you know in high school well in high school and uh you know everywhere else in the world these kids are playing club ball you know and i think in essence that's what this season has become there's very few states that are actually playing high school games and so yeah it's understandable that these players are enrolling early it's happened in football for a long time but football is a fall sport so they can graduate and kind of get on their uh college campus it just hasn't happened in basketball but i i think uh you know, like, like anything, there's copycats and they'll, they'll keep doing it for a while. And then they'll realize, wow, I really did like playing high school basketball. So they'll stay. So, so who knows, this is a, a just an unusual year, obviously. And, you know, people have asked me, well, how about your signees? Would they want to, I can't find enough time for the kids we've got <laughs> right now. So it, it wouldn't be probably that smart or beneficial for, for our players to come early. All right. What other item uh, is flopping? I mean, if people who listen to the radio broadcast hear me complain over the years, and, and I, it's something I, I think that doesn't help the game. And it's at all different levels. Uh, you see it in the NBA, the WNBA. But uh, what are your thoughts on, on getting flopping out of the game? Or well, you, I think what the think? pro leagues, the pro leagues have done, they've penalized the floppers. And, um, and so, you know, I think we need to do the same thing. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of things I would change, but I can't really say say that Terry or I get in trouble I uh, you know I just wish it would be consistent from game to game and I just don't think it is unfortunately yeah because because right now I think you can run over and jump in front of somebody you probably eight out of ten times you're gonna get a charge out of it and that's yeah. why they keep doing it but I, I got a chance to talk with Taylor Chavez yesterday uh, the veteran and uh, uh, you know just t a terrific young woman but uh, tell, tell us your thoughts on Taylor and, and her game and the person she is well, we need Taylor to step up. I mean, we really need that right now. And, uh, you know, and we, we've asked her to, uh, you know, kind of be that, that leader that, that we need on the court, that toughness. You know, we've missed that. I thought we missed her the, uh, the weekend that we lost to, to UCLA uh, because I think she can really give that to us. She's a playmaker. Uh, I think, you know, we're, we're going to insert her into the lineup and see if that, that will really help us. You know, right now, like you look at Arizona, you know, we had to put Tahina on Ari McDonald and, uh, you know, she's got enough on her plate offensively. Plus, she's a freshman. You know, that's the kind of person that, that Taylor Chavez, you know, I think could could take, you know, and just have that role. I can be a defensive stopper. I can attack the basket and I can be that toughness that we need. And uh, but but she's a you know, she's an outstanding person, as you well know. I mean, you, you've been around her. Uh, very thoughtful, great teammate, you know, super smart. I mean, in the classroom, she's one of our smartest players. So she's really the whole package in terms of being coachable and and, and a great teammate. Uh, but right now we, we need her. We need her leadership. We need her experience. We need, she knows what the culture is about here and she needs to, to, you know, reinforce that and, uh, and can and, and pass that legacy on to, uh, to the young ones. How about that big win by the Buffaloes? We were all Buff yeah. fans, I guess, on Sunday. And, and your, your good buddy, J.R. Payne, uh, amazing. Knocking off number one Stanford. Helps everybody at the conference, too. Well, it does. You know, now everyone's one game closer to the top. And, uh, you know, we still, uh, you know, we, we need them to take another loss. And then we can control our own destiny here. But, um, yeah, I was really happy for J.R. She's one of the nicest people in the in the profession, and I think there's not a single person anywhere alive, probably even Stanford fans, that weren't kind of happy to see it happen for her and her team. Uh, it just goes to show you, man, this this league is tough, and uh, you know you better bring on on every given night, or else you'll get beat. We've we've seen that. Speaking of bringing it this Friday, you have first off, uh, you get the Washington schools, but you get Washington State and those Ledger Walker sisters uh, from New yeah. Zealand. They are really, really good. The whole team's pretty good. The whole team's pretty good. I got to give Cammie a lot of credit. Now, I didn't pick them 12th, but, you know, they were, I think, picked last in the conference. And 
uh, what a mispick. But they're also now finding out that, uh, you know, they were riding pretty high. I think they were 5-1 and one in conference or 4-1 and one in conference. Our, we were their only loss. They go down to the L.A.s and lose two. Now they got to come to the Oregons and play a couple of really good teams. And then they have Stanford back-to-back next week so i think they're they're going to learn here that you know this is uh <laughs> that's why this conference conference is so tough but man i i love those two they are just ballers you know um the young one she reminds me a lot of sabrina you know you can't speed her up she's so strong she's so confident uh and um that it's going to be a really good game as it was in pullman isn't that funny how this worked. Remember when we talked about that game, I had a lot of people that texted me, well, that's a wake up call for your team. And I was trying to say, no, they're really good. Yeah. But people are thinking old Washington state. Well, I, you know, they've proven that they're a really good team. And so, yeah, we're going to have to play really well. All right, coach, uh, as always, thanks for the visit. And uh, we'll talk to you later in the week is get ready to take on the Cougars. You got it, Terry. Thanks buddy. See you. All right, there you go, head coach Kelly Graves as uh, we roll along here on Tip-Off Tuesday. Coming up next, Taylor Chavez after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. What's it like to grow with the O? At OCCU, we support Duck fans each step of the way by educating our youth with Lucky Duck Savings, celebrating independence with Duck Debit Checking, and rewarding members with the Duck Credit Card. That's how Duck fans grow with OCCU. Learn how you can, too, at myoccu.org slash ducks. Dear Wallet, you can't stop in a 2021 Toyota no matter the weather. The Camry all-wheel drive comes out to play. Snowy hills don't stand a chance against the RAV4, and everyone will be comfy in the Highlander. See you in the snow. Toyota. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. More than ever, you're looking for the perfect getaway. With gourmet food, your favorite games, and a beautiful lodge, book the perfect getaway at Spirit Mountain Casino, the Northwest's premier entertainment destination. Go to spiritmountain.com. You're listening to Ducks Basketball on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. I'm probably okay to have one more drink before I drive home. I'm probably okay. I open the window to stay alert. Probably okay. I just popped some gum in my mouth. Step out of the car, please. I probably made a mistake. Probably okay isn't okay when it comes to drinking and driving. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. When I grow up, I want to be a new pair of blue jeans. When I grow up, I want to be a kid's first computer. I want to be a on a cool I wanna day. Be a football I want to be a bike that races around the country. I want to be a bench on a forest trail. When I grow up, I don't want to be a piece of garbage. And if you recycle me, I won't be. Give your garbage another life. Recycle. Learn how at IWantToBeRecycled.org. Brought to you by Keep America Beautiful and the Ad Council. Welcome back, everybody. Tip off Tuesday, Terry and Joey, and let's get right to the interview with Taylor Chavez. All right, Taylor, aren't you glad that uh, I get to talk to you after what happened down in Arizona? I'm sure you're going. I'm so glad Terry wanted to talk to me, but uh, you know, you're you're one of the leaders, if not the leader. And how does a team deal with something like that? This is a program not used to losing, and not used to losing like that. Yeah. Um. Honestly, I feel like it's really just a gut check. Like, it's one of those, the response to a game like that, especially when we've dropped three of the last four. Um, it's kind of season defining in a way this next week. And especially, we have Washington State coming, who we barely beat and who just almost beat UCLA. So, really, I feel like the response to that because I mean it's in the past now you can't control it although we're all very disappointed with the level of play we demonstrated um right now the only thing that is in our control is our response so 
How much as far as leadership that, that, that you learned from Sabrina, from, you know, Ruthie, Satu, you room with, uh, with Satu, uh, Mignon, uh, Maite, from a couple of years mm -hmm. ago. What, how much did you learn from them? Not, I guess, not just leadership, but uh, anything. Um, I learned a lot. I mean, all of those players, I feel like their greatest attribute, regardless of basketball wise, is that they're extremely selfless and um, had no egos. And I think that's what made it possible um, for a team to thrive. So I think that was definitely that's the best thing I could say about each and every one of those people. It's not even, I don't even think basketball. That's not even the first thing that comes to mind. It just comes to mind of how selfless they were when it came to um, the team success. Yeah, Sabrina, Ruthie, that crew, Maite, uh, before you got here, th their freshman year, they mm -hmm. went eight and 10 in the conference, uh, lost their last three in the regular season, struggled to beat a not really good Arizona team in the first round of the Pac-12 tournament. And then they take on Washington in front of 10,000 Husky fans up in Seattle and they beat them to, you know, a fi yeah. previous final four team. So they, they, they know what that's like. And you can see the end result of that, of, of, of where they came, can't you? Exactly. Yeah, no, I know that we have a new team this year, so it's definitely an uphill battle, but um, I think it looks promising. So, yeah, 2019 final four, you were injured last year or this past season, I guess it's, well, it officially is last year. We got rid of 2020, but we're still dealing with some things here in 2021. But uh, you didn't get to finish the business and uh, uh, that you wanted to do. And it, it certainly looked like you had a good shot at uh, bringing home the trophy from what New Orleans it would have been. But uh, uh, how tough was that to deal with for everybody? That was so tough. That still bothers me every single day. I don't think I'll ever get over that one. Um, especially knowing that we felt extremely confident. We were peaking in March, late March, we were peaking. And that is extremely rare in itself. And then you look at the squad we had. So it was just the perfect storm. And then um, to have it get derailed by a pandemic of all things, that's something we've never saw coming was just insane. So I know I've talked to a lot of my teammates from that team often still. And we always, it's, it's laughable now because I mean, can't do anything about it. It is what it is, but it's definitely something I'll always talk about, about that team and how unfortunate it was that it ended that way. But um, if anything, I'm really glad that we got to finish the tournament, the Pac-12 tournament. Cause I know a lot of teams weren't lucky enough to be able to finish their um, conference tournament. So I'm glad we got to do that because I feel like if that last game against Stanford was the ending chapter of that team, I wouldn't really replace that either. So, yeah, you got to cut down nets. And that was, that was pretty cool. And, and, and bring home another trophy and wear some more rings and all those things. Exactly. Satu from that team, uh, they're doing great in the professional ranks, of course. Uh, yeah former roommate of yours. Of course, you're rooming with Niara mm -hmm. as well. But uh, I know you talked about Satu's cooking. So I, I guess what's the dish that Satu cooked up that you most miss? Oh, my goodness. That's so funny you mentioned that. She actually posted it on her Instagram story yesterday. Um, it's called Benichin. It's like an African dish. And it's, it's just rice and vegetables and meat, but it's the seasonings that, like, make it african i guess you could call it but yeah that's definitely the dish i miss the most niara makes it too but not as often but niara makes it really good too so say she it hasn't again. made it in a long time. what's the name of it again it's called it's called benichin benichin i'm gonna have to look it up mm -hmm. all right yeah I it's may, really may have to see if i can do it it wouldn't be as good but whatever uh, <laughs> I, I, we talked last year too and i know you went to germany not this past summer summer before with Mm -hmm. uh, Niara and, and Satu, and, and, and we didn't really talk about that, didn't delve into it, but uh, what was your favorite part of Germany? What did you, what'd you get out of all that? Because you were a couple weeks in Europe, weren't you? I was. We went to Berlin. Um, we went to Prague, and then we also went to Amsterdam. So I honestly, all three of those cities were amazing. Um, Berlin, I feel like 
was really neat in regards to it was a bit it's a big city yeah. um and a lot more like urban than amsterdam or prague so that was really fun and just more lively but um prague was just gorgeous because of all the architecture and that's the same with Amsterdam. Amsterdam was really neat with all the canals. And then um, I think it was in Amsterdam. We visited the Van Gogh museum, which was amazing. And that was something that, especially when I was little, I was really big into art and um, definitely was interested in Van Gogh. So then actually being able to go to that museum and see all these paintings that I learned about when I was little was really neat. Now you mentioned the pandemic earlier, um, which we're st- still dealing with. Uh, how have you guys dealt with this as a team? How how has that gone? I mean, last year's team had the sudden end that we talked about, but now this year's new team, nine new players basically as far as playing. Yeah. How are you dealing with it? Um, honestly, it's just a day by day thing. It's really, it is difficult for everyone because we all have the same exact routine every single day. There's like really a lack of social interaction with people outside of our group, which makes it difficult. And then um, everything's done over Zoom school-wise. So it's just weird, but I feel like everyone's dealing with it in the best way they can, trying to be optimistic because, I mean, in a way, even though it is unfortunate that we're lacking these social interactions, we're lacking these um like events that we normally would have on campus and such. Um, There's also like a familiarity with the schedule we have because it's the same every day. All right, there you go, Taylor Chavez. And uh, uh, there's a little bit more, and you can hear it on Duck Insider coming up tomorrow. The extended cut? Yeah, the the extended cut. Yeah. It's like the director's cut in a movie. You know, you get the extra deleted scenes. And what, Oregon women's basketball, whoever, wherever, you'll you'll get to hear it because we talked about, you know, she answers some people that think maybe you shouldn't be playing because of the pandemic. She has a good answer. Good stuff from Taylor Chavez. Uh, Tip-off Tuesday presented by Carl's Jr. Yeah, we got more coming up on Duck Insider, a lot more basketball conversation. Uh, The women at 5 o'clock on Friday and the men 7.30 Saturday. Big weekend. Good to be back to basketball. We'll see you. In the mood for a charbroiled double cheeseburger for just $2.99? Have a BLT, the Carl's Jr. way. Crispy bacon, fresh lettuce and tomato with cheesy charbroiled beef, plus creamy ranch and more charbroiled beef. It's the new BLT Ranch Double Cheeseburger. That beefy enough for you?